Hello everybody, I'm Kylie and we're back with another video. This time we're going to be looking at some of my tests from the previous year. I have three calculus tests here for us to look at. This is a midterm that I had in Calc 1. This is the final of Calc 1 and then this is um, one of the exams of Calc 2. So we're going to be looking at these tests and so that you guys can see how calculus tests are at MIT. So we can kind of look at my scores if you're interested. I got 107 out of 120, 155 out of 200, and then 46 out of 55. So I did pretty, pretty average at MIT, I think. So these are pretty, pretty average scores for some context. Um, if you see the numbers at the top, MIT courses are described with numbers, not like with calc. They're instead 1801 or 1802, as in this one. So the A is a kind of special thing. So if you take 1801A, it means that you split a semester with calc 1 and 2. So usually people do that if they have some previous experience in calc 1, like I did, but none in calc 2. So it starts off with kind of a review and then caps off with calc 1 and then it finishes off with Calc 2. So it's kind of a special program, since a lot of MIT students come in with some Calc 1 experience. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with this midterm first. So all of the tests look the same on the front. They have the instructions, you put your name, you circle your recitation. I was in Oscar's recitation, he was a really good recitation leader and um, they have the section for the graders. So if we take a look, problem one says, um, it's some um, approximation problem. I got full points on this problem actually, woo! Um, that doesn't happen very often. Um, you're supposed to show your work so that they can give partial credit. Usually classes at MIT give lots of partial credit. So I usually try and show my work. They give check marks usually. Problem two is a limit problem. And it looks like I also got nice points on this one. Limits are usually pretty easy, easier part of it. Problem three, can't remember. Looks like I got full points on the first three problems. Then we can look at what I messed up on. Yep, integral, solving integrals. Looks like I did some substitution. Yep. Problem four is where I started to mess up. It says evaluate the following, so calculate the limit. Looks like I forgot a one half out here. Stupid me, lost a point for that. See, if you show your partial credit, even if your answer's wrong because of some simple mistake you did, they'll still give you almost full points. I only lost one point on this problem. And then for this, I got this one right. Calculate the indefinite integral. Use partial fractions. They like to give you hints. It's not like they're trying to kill you at MIT. They're just like, just the material's hard, but we'll occasionally give you hints. Okay, problem, twin, or problem five, 25 points. I got 10 out of 15 here. So it looks like I set it up wrong. So it's one of these where you have to calculate the area underneath the, or in some, some space in the graph and it looks like I set it up wrong so yeah it says to set up but not do like do not evaluate so I set it up wrong which is the whole point well so like I drew it right probably but set it up wrong sad and it looks like here I got full points yay looks like it's a 3d one consider a solid shape Set up again, but do not evaluate. So they do this thing where like they don't want you to do mindless math, so you don't have to evaluate a lot of problems. You just have to set up the stuff. Okay, problem six. The function f of x is defined by this and calculate the arc length. All right. So arc length formula. Looks like I did that one right. And then this one. Um, I didn't do so well on this. This one. Hmm. Yeah, express in terms of f of x the value of this. So I had to like, ooh, yeah, that was that was a little tricky, tricky there. So you had to like look at this and see how it relates to this. 
This looks easier now, but back then, this was, like, hard. Lol. Yeah. Then I was, I really liked Oscar, so I put a little mark. Oscar is the best recitation leader. Yeah, and then they, they give you the, the trig identities on the past, last page. Like I said, MIT doesn't like to have you memorize a lot of things. It's more like problem solving and figuring out hard problems. So, okay, that was first, first test. All right, so for the next test, we're gonna be looking at my final. Format's the same on the front. I did a little bit worse on this test. Problem one, my grader says great, hooray. Um, says find the best linear approximation to this using whatever method it looks like I made a sign error or something and um, they took off they took off points because of that so kind of sad um looks like I did good here let me tell hooray evaluate the limit limits are easy all right calculate the following indefinite integrals looks like I did that right um, this one more sign errors, I think. Kind of sad, same points off for sign errors. And um, looks like I did this one right. It's really sad when you get points off for sign errors, don't you think? Hmm. All right, next problem. Consider a bull whose base is model on the equation this. So another one of these, do, like set up, but do not evaluate. Looks like I actually did this one, okay. And then this one. Another one of those set up but do not evaluate, so that's good. And this one, non-elementary function this. Um, calculate its derivative. So you calculate the derivative of that. Looks like I did that one fine. I don't know why they gave so much space for this problem. <laughs> Could do it in one line. Okay, so using partial fractions, calculate the indefinite integral that. So partial fractions, hooray. All that jazz. Work, 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 and then woo. Yeah, so partial fraction just formula you plug in everything. So that one was pretty straightforward. This one deserved the whole page of work. Next one. So this one I didn't do so well on. Mm, I don't I think if I remember correctly, I was really struggling with understanding this, so um, that was tough. Then for this one, so this converging and diverging thing is a little bit harder for me, I think. So this person asked why, <laughs> um, even though I explained why here, I'm not really sure. Hmm. What's done is done. On here, looks like I missed one point on each of these. Um, looks like I just didn't explain deeply enough sad very sad one point off because of that problem eight find the radius of conversions for the power series looks like I did look at, looks like i did good here nice shoot i really hated learning about power series <laughs> um and then calculate the exact value of the infinite series this looks like i did fine here as well and then this one, but again, they put Y, so it looks like I didn't explain enough again, even though I tried. Very sad. And then last one I did really good, so it says, suppose we have a function f of x for which f of 0 equals 1, and which satisfies the differential equation this. Can't get the first three non-zero terms in the Taylor expansion. Taylor expansions are very important, especially in physics now. Have to learn actually how to apply them instead. So that was very important to learn about. Then of course we have the trigonometric value or trigonometric identities on the back. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, we have our Calc 2 exam here, 1802A. I did um, okay on this, not super good, but okay. Bishal is supposed to be a really good TA recitation leader. Um, he was very good, I agree. Problem one, looks like I did good, according to the check. So it was about vector fields. Um, hooray. 
And then Flux in this problem. Looks like I did good here too. Next we have another vector field problem for which values of a and b is the vector field conservative. So it's just learning what conservative is. More vector fields. Um, again, for what values of a and b do you, that you found above, find a potential function for f using one of the methods from class. So it actually says to show your work, though I do that anyway. Partial credit, yay! And then here, looks like I messed up. Um, they put what I'm supposed to have. Calculate the line integral where f, or where c is the curve from y equals x to the fifth going from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Um, looks like I messed up here and just put it in wrong, which is sad. That's very sad. Okay, next problem. Um, more vector fields. Hooray! Using the normal form of Green's theorem, compute the flux of f through c. Notice the curve is not closed. So more pluses according to partial credit. That's good. Always get partial credit. Then partial credit here. Um, but I, I couldn't figure out what it was at the end. So couldn't get the answer, but all the partial credit adds up. It really does, especially if you're drawing the pictures. Next problem, let V be a solid obtained from moving all points with this from the sphere of this, right? The boundary is for V in terms of the cylindrical coordinates. So this is knowing what cylindrical coordinates are. And uh, apparently I didn't do so well. And this one, suppose the density of V is given by the density function this, so density function problem, set up a do not evaluate again. This kind of thing, really common. The mass of V is a triple iterated integral in cylindrical coordinates. So I set it up, hooray. Then another problem. Suppose we have mystery vector field F. So this is a really long problem you have to read through. And um, apparently I did the area of the wrong region. Sad. <laughs> um, yeah. How many, how many points was this problem worth? Five. So I got six out of ten. Okay. So I like, you know, I took, apparently maybe I got the right area. It was just the wrong region. That was kind of sad. Yeah. And then scratch paper. No trigonometric identities in this one. Yep. So those were the cat tests. And I'll be doing other tests in the future. So, um, yeah, you guys can see what tests at MIT are like. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye!